we should be live. It's alive! If you're watching us on Twitch, make sure you do a quick refresh. And hopefully that'll come in. You may get a commercial. But it does show that we are now streaming live on Twitch. And recording. I'm going to refresh. Make sure we're going good. Crimson1919, if you can hear us. And record. Please let us know. Uh, of course, there's a commercial. Commercial, commercial, commercial. I think I'll wait till the advertisement before we get started there. Seth, what do you think? I want to know what happens to these Sour Patch Kids. Don't talk to me. I'm focused. You got Sour Patch Kids? I got Bud Light. I think they know who's drinking on this cast. What? I'm not Bud Light, that's for sure. No. No way in hell. Which, I'm going to have to go get a bottle before... Ooh, you know what? Mm. Not next weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, but the weekend after, we got that huge, 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 huge... Yep. ...podcast coming up. I'm that We're going to have, like, a huge amount of people on We're going to have, like, eight people on at one time. Yep. That's going to be freaking crazy. So, I mean, I... if you can hear us, guys, make sure you can hear us. Uh, give us a quick shout-out. Make sure we're all right. Like, Legionnaires is here? What? Rock and roll in the free world. I am but so yes. excited for that show. Um, actually, I've been talking to our guests that we're going to be having on the show. Um, and we're get, we are going to be uh, talking about painting and competitions. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to be adding in... Um, a, a pretty serious segment. Sweet. Uh, hey, Congo. How's it going? Congo! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. We were just talking about, uh, not next weekend, the weekend after, we're going to have a podcast, uh, and I'm going to promote it because I really want a lot of people to watch this one. Uh, we are going to have a total of eight people on this podcast. Uh, my set, myself, Seth, and like five other people, six other people. Um, <laughs> everybody that's committed to it. There's been six people committed. Um, we're going to be talking about some competition painting um, from the di the aspect of all six of our guests that we have on. Uh, we're also going to be talking about something that's plaguing our community right now, which kind of pisses us off. Uh, and I'm sure it pisses, like, a lot of people off. Grimkin. Uh, yeah, the Grumblekin. Fuck those bastards. Those bastards, is, yeah, they f fuck everybody up. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I'll be... <laughs> and so we're going to uh, have something pretty big happen on that one um, other than that we'll have some really awesome guests we'll have the plethora from like newly type commission painter to people that have been doing it and do it a lot um, mm -hmm. but we won't make an announcement uh, after we do this podcast uh, I'm going to kind of promote it early like uh, two weeks early that way we can get a lot of people pass it around share it around because I think it's going to be something Legionnaire, do you have 20 days and 25 score miles of paint to fully... You can do it. You can do it. I know you can. Uh, are you painting these up for War Machine Weekend, Kevin? Hey, Maximum DT, how's it going? What up, Max? Hopefully, I'm going to see all of y'all at War Machine Weekend. And I'm hopefully all going to listen to the second half when we go live for the full show so you can find out the secret, secret code word. Uh, and secret thing you have to do. <laughs> um, so you can get uh, some nice little swag from us. Um, also, if you are 40 years and older, you definitely will want to play in the uh, Senior Pro Tour. Because we will be giving away some swag there because we're sponsoring it. Ah, sweet. Good job, Maximum. Um, also... Um, we are sponsoring the uh, Colossal Wrestling Tournament, and I will be showing the pro uh, the uh, trophies off throughout the live broadcast. So it'll be kind of pretty fun. Um, other than that, Seth, how was your week, man? My week was good. It's been a, an exciting week at work. I'm looking forward to the next one because it's homecoming week at a high school that I know I'm in Virginia, but I'm pretty sure it's actually East Texas right there. Uh, 
So it's going to be exciting. There is a Star Wars day. Did I try to get a giant Chewbacca onesie? I did. Yes. Ooh, that'd be awesome. I need to see pictures. Yeah. Well, finding one that fits me tend to be a problem, given that I am nerd size. Um, You're also well, pretty tall, too. Well, you're over six foot? Uh, yeah, I'm almost 6'3". Yeah. So, being that tall means that if it does fit me height-wise, and I've only ever had one that fit me height-wise, it looked like I should have been had like the Kool-Aid man in there with me. <laughs> um, yeah, so other than that, I've been doing a bunch of painting, and the uh, October giveaway model for for our Patreons is maybe an hour's work away. Uh, but awesome. tonight I'm working on a competition model for a local competition, painting up the creepiest of creepy models that you could come up with with Halloween themes. So I've got a king of nothing sitting in his extended tree. And he's he's going to give some nightmares to somebody. Um, mainly me, because I have got a lot to do before the deadline. That's actually a really, really cool model, though. It is. It's beautiful. It's really well done. The resin cast was fantastic. Uh, and it made it easy for the positioning. Yeah, it's a great piece. Um, I have a feeling, actually, as I've been looking at the Grimkin, that we're going to see plenty of Grimkin in the competitions in the coming years. Because uh, those casters are so characterful. The, um, the solos, especially uh, Lord... What's his name? The guy with the two pistols. Lord Long, Longfellow. Lord Longfellow. Okay, that's what I was going to say, but I was worried I was thinking about work again. Um, he's great. The Twilight Sisters are awesome. So I, I like what I'm seeing uh, coming out of Grimkin. Um, I also get, had time to get in a game last week. Uh, uh -oh. at, the very, at the very beginning of the week. And uh, one of our local Medoth players got to find out that Amon is awesome until you're facing uh, Sentinels and Halberdiers with 15-inch charges. <laughs> at, at which point, you know, he's like, oh, uh, I only killed one of his jacks, but I left all of his jacks on five boxes or less. So... It was just a matter of attrition after that. Uh, he also said the phrase that ret players just giggle at, and I felt so bad when he said, so, wait, vengeance means you get to activate those guys twice? Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. So it was a great game, a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, Max, the Witchwood looks awesome. The woman offering the apple is fantastic. I would really like to see one in person, um, because I think it holds up even partly to what I've seen as far as online stuff. Uh, that's going to have to join the collection. Um, which would... Uh, I, I, let's make one quick announcement. John is not on today. He's having problems with his internet, so it's just going to be us two. So um, hopefully maybe he'll come back by the time the regular show starts. Uh, other than that, um, go on the Witchwood. From a competitive standpoint, when I first thought about the Witchwood, I was like, this model's crap. This model's horrible. This model doesn't do anything. It's not going to be able to get where it needs to go. And then playing it this weekend, holy crap is that model balls-ass fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it was so much fun. Um, just teleporting up, taking control of a model, smashing another model with it. Because um, I, I, someone had the Fane Knight, was playing me with the Fane Knight. And uh, I was going to take the Fane Knight and walk him behind the caster that had no focus on him because uh, he was playing uh, Varos 1 and just Ooh. smashing him in the back. But didn't get a chance to. It didn't work. But I used it to, because I had two in the list and was teleporting around doing things. Um, the thing is just, it's, the Witchwood is so stupid good. Teleport, two attacks, able to shoot while in melee, and gets to shoot in melee at the same time. Um, the model's super creepy cool. I can't wait to paint mine. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I'm going to be doing it in that sketch type style. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is, um, you know, typically I do like the eyes as the glow point or, you know, the color point. Um, I think what I'm going to do on this one is I am going to do the eyes, but it's going to be a really, really small bit of color. But um, I'm going to take the apples and make them the kind of the glow point. Um, and one tree is going to be green apples and one tree is going to be red apples. I like it. Um, just kind of get a little bit different feel and different thing to it. Uh, after I do all the yeah, white dry brushing and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
I Congo, I uh, I am really, really, really wanting into that. I told my um, we're talking about the Batman game. Uh, mm-hmm. so it's like a new edition coming out, and I really wanted to get into that because uh, I saw the Bane models um, that are coming out, in the newer Bane stuff that's coming out for the new edition. And I told my local store to buy me a, a copy of that, and I watched quite a fit bit of um battle reports and information and I really liked it. It seemed like it was a pretty fast and fun game. Um, they had a lot of good stuff with it. It, it. Besides the models being really cool, it looked like a lot of fun. Played on a smaller board. Need a little bit more terrain, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, but it was it was pretty good. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm waiting until we get all of our stuff in before we do anything. But I'm actually looking forward to the Batman game. That's the other one that I... That's my next game. Let's see, Crimson, I'm reading your post real quick. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you'll you'll always have those people, Crimson. Um, The rules for Sam Terrain are so easy now. Pretty much you put everything in the center and space it all out. Um, Mm -hmm. that's, it's pretty easy. That's just somebody that's being a douche. Just ignore them. Tell them to kiss your butt. (laughs) Um, Crimson, what model did you paint up? I'm kind of curious. Post it onto our, um, post it onto our Facebook group, uh, on yeah. the More Than Dice Facebook group, and put it on there, and uh, show us your metal and stuff that you got bronze. We're always excited about people's stuff, especially Absolutely. our listeners. Put it on there. Post it up. Have fun. I like to see what people did, especially if you are almost on the verge of getting silver. I'm wondering which which show you're at. Yeah. Also, what show we're at? Yeah. So for those who cannot see the stream. Uh, Crimson said he had an issue this weekend setting up terrain. People were at a War Machine event and people were not particularly nice about it. But on the upside, he got to go to a figure show, got a uh, Forge Seer at the Ottawa figure show that took bronze. Not bad. Them Canadian painters is pretty good. Congo, if you're asking if there's a group, it's our Facebook group, More Than Dice. More Than Dice, a podcast. We have a Facebook page. I think you're on it. If not, let me know. The Ottawa Figure Show. Never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a big con coming up, uh, what, next week? Uh, for all of our painters and figure friends. Was it a uh, ReaperCon? Mm-hmm. That's like a pretty big one. That's the reason why we didn't do the event next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it's honestly, I think... Um, I think it's the biggest painting event in the U.S. and probably in all of North America, though I can't say for sure. Crystal Brush is the most competitive, but the people who show up to ReaperCon are some of the best and some people who are brand new and you get all kinds of things. Uh, one of these years I'm going to get to go and I'm going to have way too much fun. Yeah, I know a lot of... Um... A lot of the guests we're going to have on in two weeks, they're all going, and that was the reason why we pushed it back to the end of this month. Yep. Um, yeah. Now that I'm in this part of the... I'm in the South, ReaperCon will probably happen next year. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm planning on um, talking about cons. Um, let's see. Definitely going to Adepticon next year. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll see you there, buddy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Crimson... Post it up. Um, Lady Ford's here at the top of the page. Uh, 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 uh. I sent off my illish to someone to get painted. Um, I saw that on your thing. I'm trying to find it. Da, 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 da. Oh, is that model? Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. Um, do me a favor, post it to our Facebook group. That way we can have it on there. 
I like having I like having and everybody's welcome to post anything they want on the Facebook group and you know just hey guys I painted this model up cool awesome job we mm-hmm. like that we like hearing and seeing what everybody's doing um oh gotcha no you're in the pre ramble Solasar we're just starting we're talking about ReaperCon and stuff. Uh, we're talking about conventions, because I am going to... You want to hear something really, really scary? Super, super scary? Top secret? Apparently, yeah. yeah. Don't tell anybody. This is between you and I, Seth. All right, everybody turn your mics off, turn your com- screens, everything. Just turn it off so you can't hear. All right, I know they did that because we have awesome listeners. I am actually going to go to probably the ATC and play in the Masters there. I'm going to lose oh, really? my ass off, but I think I'm going to go. That's awesome. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it just for fun, just so I can have some play a bunch of games, hang out with a bunch of people. Uh, it's in January. Hopefully the weather won't be too horrible. I couldn't find a, I couldn't find a, a team, so I'm not worried about it. I just want to go up and play. Also, get to see some friends and hang out more. All right, everybody, you can turn your, uh, you can turn your speakers back on and unmute everything. We're good. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Legionnaires, about the Reaper bones, I have issues with their plastic. Um that the paint doesn't stick particularly well to it. Now, I know that there's people who wash them, clean them, who uh, swear that they work wonderfully. Bones plastic, because it's PVC, has got special instructions on the Reaper website. When I followed those instructions to the letter, it's worked fine. Um, You don't get quite as much detail. They're a little bit soft. Uh, But even on this piece I'm working on right now, I stuck a Reaper rat on here. He's bones because he was it was like a buck twenty for six of them. So if you're doing it for um, non part of competition stuff, jump in. They're great. Yeah, that were those um, we had a guy that had uh, that brought his Kickstarter from Bones into the mm-hmm. store was unwrapping it and stuff and it was all that rubber stuff. It reminded me like the Grimkin dread rots are like that. I'm just like, yeah, no. Um, apparently, just just the initial release. Oh my god, there's a delivery. Hey, internet. Hey, where's my dinner? Fine. Gonzo wants his dinner. Yeah. Uh, tonight, Gonzo, we're going to have a burger with spinach. It's pretty plain, let's be honest. Burger with spinach? Yeah, I'm kind what of phoning heck? it in tonight. Oh, spinach, though? Are you Hi. trying to poison him? What's in the fridge? Just take the spinach off. It's better to leave the spinach off than <laughs> put no spinach, spinach on it. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I hear you. All right. Detailed on the spinach. Detailed on the spinach. <laughs> All right, noted. <laughs> <laughs> that's reason. Yeah. Thanks. Now, I have so, a feeling she likes doing that now because she knows she's internet famous. Oh yeah, she is internet famous. As Seth are we all. Um, now, I do have to say the one thing I wanted from Reapers was that Tiamat. Yeah. Uh, I wanted that model so bad. I was like, oh, I would totally fuck with a paint job on that. But that model is amazing looking. It's so cool. Yeah, their large scale stuff has been really nice for the Bones. Uh, for Christmas one year, I got my daughter the Bones... Um, Cthulhu, because she was in a Lovecraft stage, yep. and she still hasn't painted it, so there's a part of me that's like, I know where she keeps it. Do I just be a bad person and steal that? Yes. Yeah. Alright, Fiona, since I know you listen to the show, you've got until Christmas to start on that one before it's mine. Wow. Just take it all. Yep. Not all of it. She's got plenty of other stuff she can keep. She's got most of a Legion army. Does she play any? Off and on. Off and on. Um, off and on. She likes the hobby a lot more than she likes the playing, but I think it's because uh, she was playing against some folks who are... What's the word I'm looking for? Really good at the game and trolls. Oh, yeah. Yar, Papa, you dudes. Um... That's possible. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, thank you, Congo. Um, yeah, so she, she plays a bit, but she gets really frustrated because there's so many rules, and if she only plays one game a year, you know, it's always, it's never quite what she was hoping for. Um, her painting's getting okay. Yeah. 
Just uh, getting okay. As, yeah. 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 It's getting okay. It's it's the point where if she wanted to, she could become a really good painter, or she can stay where she is and just be like, everyone will be like, yeah, that's an okay paint job. Um, and I think a lot of people like being there because it means that their stuff looks good on the table. Uh, and that's perfect. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. No. Nope. Nope. And yes, Congo, I want to liberate Cthulhu. Think about that for a minute. Let me liberate Cthulhu. <laughs> Say, let's say, let's say. Um, other than that, um, mm -hmm. let's see. What did I do? I uh, played the tournament yesterday. Had a blast playing in the tournament yesterday. Um, found out some people still don't know how Grim can work and how to go against them and how to do stuff, uh, which is okay. Not a big deal. Um, but it was really fun. Um, played some good people, played some, just some all-around games. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to get as many games as I can. I went in going, I'm going to go 0-4. I don't care. I'm just going to play a bunch of games. Came out 3-0. and So I was like, well, shit. I guess I better start doing something right. I think we can, if you can get ahead of this wave right now, Gonzo, because of the way the Arcana work, because of how powerful they are, I mean, you were explaining to me even before we began the pre-ramble, it's dangerous to engage the Grimkin and not kill them, and it's dangerous to engage the Grimkin and kill them. Yeah, um, for people that don't know about the Grimkin Arcana, I would say 99% of them, I haven't even looked at all of them, uh, you have to do something to them for them to go off, and sometimes you, you, you can't help it. Um, Play my friend Jeremy, uh, which plays Legion, and he's really good with his Legion. And uh, I was playing the child list and had everything set up, put the child behind a wall so she'd be a higher defense in melee, had a couple of tra uh, tra uh, transfers and stuff. Uh, I thought I was going to get assassinated. Uh, he missed a couple of them, so it was, you know, you know, saving grace type thing, or I would have just been eaten to death. He charged in with Callus Two, an Angel, a Ravagor, and couldn't kill her because her de her defense stayed at 15, but her armor jumped up to 21, and then went to uh, 20, uh, and had two transfers, and just couldn't do it. Uh, I proc the Arcana because he had killed a model. Um, that all my Fury stats go up by one, which is nice to have on a Fury Eight caster. Mm -hmm. Um, and all my war beasts go to Fury 5. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, wrecked most of his beasts. Um, he only had, a, like, one beast and some small stuff. And all my war beasts were at maximum four Fury at the end of it. And so he went in and blight bombed, uh, with the Forsaken on all of my heavy war beasts and when he did that, I mean, I mean, he it was like dice minus thirteen because they were all within the the battle engine and getting the armor buff. And he did it, but he was rolling like six, six, five, you know. And on, I mean, it was like a major dice explosion. And he dropped all of my beasts down to about four or five damage left on them. And then he that's not him. enough, by the way. That's Correct. not enough. Correct. But he killed my Krabbit. And when he killed my Krabbit, I pracked, uh, I pracked the, um, what is it called? Uh, sacrifice, which then takes all of my models and heals them up to full. So all of my three war beasts I had right there were all up to max health. And then, of course, my caster went up to max health. And so he tried charging in with Callus 2. Um, on my caster hit her once uh, she took the damage it was very little uh, then she went to armor 21 and he just couldn't cut into her enough and he just looked at me and says you got me man and I'm mm -hmm. like yeah I mean it's it's just those things that people you have to do damage to get stuff done and you have to do things blah 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 um, to get the arcana to proc but if you you have to know when you need to proc those 
mm-hmm. because it's up to you because you have to force the war the Grimkin player to play those models or play those cards. Um, the best thing I've ever done, the most happiest was, is I got pretty much my um, uh, skin and moans. I think I got him up to power 25, 26 one time, uh, and a uh, thread of 14 inches or whatever, or a thread of 12 or something. Um, and it it it. And the way I did it is I not only was able to proc the plus one to hit plus one to damage and all the buffs I then char I then moved Karina Rose outside and made the and asked the person who wanted to take a free strike on her killed her so it gave another plus one to hit plus one to damage um, so Skin and Bones is walking in with like mat eight nine something like that and just beating the crap out of things um, which you do not have to take a free strike if you don't want to but I'm not gonna you know be upset if you kill Carrie Ann Rose. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, and, and Crimson, that, that's the thing. Uh, they're very easy to trigger. The thing is, is you've got to figure out which one you want your the Grimkin player to trigger. Because he can only do one around. So you've got to be able, you know, only on your turn and my turn. So you can't, you know, get all three of them. But still, you don't proc them the right way. You know, it's going to be stupid. I uh, went against a Merc player and he shot one of my guys and I had taken Shadow, not Shadow, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it turns all the models within my control area stealth. And so he shot, killed one of the models in my control area and turned my, I turned my entire army pretty much stealth. And his turn was pretty much done. Oh! Hey, Kovnik. You gotta stay longer. Eat your meal like Seth does in front of the computer. Yeah, we can't even hear you chewing. Well, come on, yes. jump in. Um, so just to answer a question from the chat. Congo, when you're going to do Zenithal priming, so you prime everything black, you want to make sure that you've got full coverage. Uh, what I tend to do is do black spray primer, go in and then use black paint and just hit anywhere that I've missed so it's nice and thin. Do white from 45 degrees lightly all around and then a concentrated spray towards the face, again from about 45 degrees, so that you have a clear source of light and no area is totally black. And then, yeah, you can use washes, glazes, thin um, thin down paint real thin, and that black will actually, and the gray will show through and pre-shade everything for you. Or you can just be like me and just totally suck at painting and cheat it all the way. Or you could be like some of the folks at the shop this weekend who bought, uh, it looked like, to my mind, a gallon size pot of dip. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, I got a whole army to paint this weekend. I was like, you're going to do a whole army? Oh, you got the dip. All right. I've seen, um, what was it? Um, I was watching a video because I had a a local guy that wasn't very good at painting. He wanted to know about it. So I bought that little small can of, you know, shader and went online and watched it. And I saw a guy, how he dipped his, which was hilarious. He did the, you know, the, the colors, um, dipped it in, then attached, he had a rod attached to the end of the model and then attached the rod onto a drill, stuck the drill inside of a box and just turned the drill on as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> just shake it all off. And I was like, now that's funny. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty good. I've seen a bunch of videos of people trying to do demos of how to use that. And they'll put up like a, a wall of paper and they will have their model in a vice grip and they will shake it as hard as they can and yep. they splatter it everywhere. I've also seen plenty where people have like lost their grip on the vice grip and it's just gone. It's like, oh, yep. I mean, well, and, and there's other wrong. I still have my can. I haven't used it. I'm gonna try. I may use it on something else just to mm-hmm. make a video on it. I mean, whatever works, guys. Whatever works. Yeah, just my my understanding and Congo's right that it's genius for people who have to do full hordes armies. Totally true. Um, I tend to think it's also for people who are going to paint things mostly one color. It's when you lose all those details that it just kills me. But you know what? To each their own. Yep. Paint it and paint it. 
Mm -hmm. Alright guys, we're going to shut down real quick, turn it back off, turn it back on, make sure we get everything going, uh, and then we'll come back and we will start the full podcast. Um, and that, we will be right back.